Hello, 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 and welcome to the Blue Oval Podcast. My name is Ben Weiss, and joining me, as always, Garrett Zatlin. How's it going, man? Just, what? wow. <laughs> <laughs> wow, man. That was wild, wasn't it? I mean, that was that was great. Shout out to Sean Ahern, uh, who was out there getting photos for us, uh, allowing us to get some some live uh, action there, some shots um, at BU. Uh, we... That that got some traction. My mom said it looked great, so I believe my mom. Um, <laughs> As but, you should. Uh, yeah, yeah. But I'm really excited. I was really looking forward to this because I I couldn't wait to sit down, uh, get some hot takes with you, and uh, see how it went. So, I mean, to put this into perspective, we have such a long list of things that we have to run through today, and so much is going to be left on the cutting room floor. Like they, we, there were so many good uh, performances this weekend. I'm so sorry we're not going to get to talk about all of them. We are going to start with the biggest news. But before we do that, we did get two new Apple ratings and reviews. Up to 85 on Apple review. Thumbs up. Nice job. Keep it up. So appreciate that. And this is the first week where Apple has uh, outnumbered Spotify in the weekly charts. So Spotify, Apple's firing back. Let's, let's, Let's see what you guys got next week. Yeah, um, that is the big news, by the way. It's not anything else that happened. It's just that is the big news. Um, also, Lay9, we're now on Apple Podcasts, Amazon Music, yes. Spotify, the YouTube. You know, go check that out. Um, so you go leave rating and review. Again, it helps us a lot. Every time I like get close to the mic, you guys all seem to like leave a rating and review. So I very much appreciate it. But in all seriousness, Ben, we have a handful of things that we're going to talk about, but the thing that we must talk about, the number one item, is Nico Young. Take it from here. We didn't think we would see as an impressive performance from Nico Young, I think, for the rest of the year after his 357 at 7,000 feet in the mile. And yet he won up that significantly by running 1257, a collegiate record, the youngest American ever to run sub 13 running 1257 just an incredible performance you wrote a wonderful piece about the race and it it, i think it again goes back to what we talked about when he ran the mile you just forget about like all the national implications and there are some there there are a lot and we'll, we'll get to that this is one of the most incredible races that we have seen in years and from a collegiate perspective we are all going to remember where like where we were how we heard about this performance it it's just staggering to i don't think either of us thought i mean especially like a year ago that we would see a sub 13 collegiate performance at least for at least another half decade and for nico to do it this year at on the back of his mile performance he's putting together and of course he's got to finish the job with with some national titles but he's putting together one of the all-time great ncaa seasons uh, that we've ever ever seen it is absurd i hear here's <laughs> i'm sorry i just i'm just like it's so incredible but here's what I said about Nico Young before the race. And I, I'm, I want to feel a lot of pride in this, but I feel like everyone could have seen a monster performance coming. So here's what I said. I said, I don't think I've ever been as high on Nico Young as I am right now. In fact, I'll go ahead and say, I think he's going to break the NCAA record on Friday. You know, he's run the three, 737, the altitude 357, which converts to 348. But if you put that all aside, he's a veteran prime for a monster performance. He historically thrives in fast-paced settings that are time trials-esque, I guess. And that is exactly what Friday night was. When you look at the number of pros in this field, uh, it's unlikely that we don't see multiple sub-13 performances. That is what I said. And I went on to predict that he would run 1259. And that was still too slow. It's wild. Do, 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 do you understand? Like, does anyone understand what I, I predicted a collegiate to run 1259 and it not even, it really wasn't even that close to what he actually ran. 
It's a full two seconds. I, I'm, I'm at a loss for words. I was like, it's so incredible. It's a historic performance. It's, it's a historic American performance. It's one that we will probably go on to talk about in American lore in the same way that I kind of compared it to Alan Webb, just in terms of the similarities of the magnitude of what that meant for their respective levels. I, I have been critical of Young in the past, but you're right. He, I have never seen someone put together a season like this, and we're not even February yet. Yeah, I, I agree with all those points. And for someone like you, who is generally, I, I want to say conservative with your predictions, but you you generally are are more realistic. You don't you don't go like try to go overboard. Well, I the past two years, I guess. But I mean, <laughs> and I'm having a good year. I'm having a good season right no, now. You, but go on, you, go on. you are, and I think that, and I I say all of that because for you to go and predict sub thirteen is is like someone who was saying like 1255 almost like i i think that's a really aggressive mark for you and for him to even outpace that is nuts and i think there's a there's a bigger conversation we we don't have the time to get into it today but you look at these incredible american high schoolers who have come into the collegiate scene and most of them even the, the the very very best. I'm I'm talking about like the the Nico Young, the Grant Fishers, the Caitlin Tui. They come in with such hype that it's it, it's pretty much impossible for them to match expectations. At least their first in their first year or two, and and most of them really didn't meet expectations in their first year. But they were good, and I I think there's just something to be said about. And this this goes for like this this past class, the Young Twins. I, I think are another example. Like if you're solid in that first year, you can expect such big things in the future. And and Nico was better than solid his freshman year. So was Grant. Uh, but like Caitlin too, we didn't see a whole lot of her freshman year. And and yet she comes along and is is incredible. I, I think we need to understand that if you're at least uh, you're good in your freshman year, then we can and you come in with that kind of pedigree. Don't like. Be impatient. It's going to come. And we've seen it time after time. And Nico Young's another great example of that. Yeah. I mean, especially more recently, you know, um, like Jenna Hutchins is another example. Yeah. Like you you kind of look at what she did. I mean, she, I want to say at one point had like the, the high school national record. I don't know if that was like ratified or what exactly what it was, but, or, or the very least she was one of the fastest 5k Mm -hmm. high school runners ever. I think ran like 1534 yeah and you're like come on come on come on and now she runs 1530 this past weekend which is you know a fantastic step and just goes to show be patient like you mentioned but but when it going back to just nico young i just it's so unbelievable and like he he made a move and then another move and you just don't expect him to then make that third move and he does it I, it was unbelievable. It was unbelievable, and I, I'm still in awe, and I'm I so desperately want him to win a title. I so desperately want to, and I I I he this is it. I mean, he is primed to do something crazy special. I mean, like if if he can just get a like a one title, he might put himself. In the Bowerman conversation. And as we all know, the Bowerman is not friendly to distance runners ever. <laughs> At least not recently, I should say. So I'm not I'm gonna stop myself before I keep going in this circular oh my gosh moment. Um but congratulations to Nico Young. I think this is what we saw his ceiling could be. And and, and he's hit it. And that's that that is not said for everyone, that's for sure. I think he's blown through the ceiling. Like to, to run twelve fifty seven, I, I think that exceeds our wildest expectations of him coming in. And, and I, I, I think your point about him being able to make an, another move and yet another move, I think that's the difference this year. Is yeah. he could always make that first move or two to separate himself and to to give him some self some space, but he he struggled to have that extra gear when someone comes up near him or when he's just trying to 
accelerate and, and change the pace for like a third or fourth time. And he seems to just have those gears this year. And, and that bodes yep. very, very well for the national team. Yeah. I mean, like, you know, it's, he, he was still running pretty quick at the end there. And it's ironic that the guy who out kicked him is Adrian Wildscoot, who yeah. <laughs> is, who's even said in his post-race interviews, which you can find on uh, TSR YouTube, by the way, um, He's like, yeah, like I've been like working on my kick, working on my kick, working on my finishing speed. I was not great in college with my finishing speed. And he just says that over and over and over again. And now ironically, now he just beats Nico yeah. Young in a in a kind of a I don't want to say a kicker's race in a twelve fifty six win, but like <laughs> you get you get what I'm saying. So congratulations. I do want to stay on the five K before we move sure. on to all of this craziness. I wrote this in our first thoughts article. I feel terrible. For Aaron Las Harris and Theo Quax. <laughs> These guys each ran 1316. Like everyone's losing their mind about Nico Young and as, and rightfully so, as they should. But then these guys go out and everyone turns around, they're like, oh, did they run 1316? It's like, yes, they did. Those times are top 15 5K times in NCAA history. And yet they're not going to get any attention. And that's a shame. It is. It, I mean, 19 seconds. There's a 19 second gap, which is ridiculous to say for someone running 1316. And yeah, I, I, the NAU leaderboard for the 5K is absolutely stunning. And for those guys to put themselves as high up at, at, on that board as they did this weekend, they're true All American threats. They're going to, uh, Theo Quacks seem, uh, things seem to be clicking on all cylinders this year. Mm -hmm. I think for Las Harris, this is what we hoped could happen when he came to NAU, that he could kind of go to another level. And he absolutely has. This this group's been great for him. It's going to be fun to see what they try to do at nationals because they're going to have probably a lot of guys in there and they can kind of control how it's run if they want to. Um, Deal quacks, mile or 5k. I think at this point, hey, you run 1316, you run the 5K. 5K like, there, there's a lot less variability there. Like the, the best guys, especially if they want to run this fast, are a lot more consistently, are going to finish higher more consistently than in a mile. Well, I should, should mention, here's a wild stat. Quacks and Les Harris are in the top 15 all-time for the 5K. They're not even in the top five of this season. It's ridiculous. Isn't that wild? <laughs> So I'm telling you, it's gonna be. I I thought this year was gonna peter off, like in terms of the qualifying lists, a little bit, uh, like start to flatten out. You're starting to see some six year seniors graduate out from all the COVID eligibility, but it seems like we're going full steam ahead. We're gonna have another banner year, and maybe next year is the year when it finally level, or maybe it just doesn't. It, maybe this is the new reality. I remember, I was typing like, well, surely. 742 should get you into the national meet, right? Right? And, like, I'm just not confident. I'm not, like, 100% sold that that will definitely happen. So, um, all right. Ben, you and I are going to do something different. Ladies and gentlemen, there are so many performances. We're going to try to hit the major ones, but this is really, really hard, okay? We're going to try our best. Because there are so many crazy, wild performances, what we have done is that we have numbered each of these performances. And as a result, I have then gone to a random number generator, a wheel of sorts, and I'll spin it. There's 14 performances that we could talk about. We'll see how we do on time. We'll go from there. I'll spin. I'll remove that from the the spinner, and then we'll we'll go again. So, Ben, here here we go. I'm going to go ahead and spin it here. And we just landed on... Oh, this takes longer than I thought it would. (laughs) (laughs) Landed on number eight. So tell me, what is number eight? Number eight. So just to be clear, this is not like we didn't number this in any particular order. This is kind of random order. This is not like what we think is the eighth best storyline or whatever. This is just eight. So eight, a a compilation of women's 800 performances. We have Sanu Jello of Arkansas, Oklahoma State's, Gabi Galvadite and Clemson's Gladys Kepnegenich all running 202. For Galvadite, I think this is what we were kind of expecting this year um, after after the way she's kind of begun this season. 
uh, for Jalo and Kipnik or Chepnagenich, really good performances, establishing themselves a little bit more at the NCAA elite level. Yeah, Jalo, I'm really excited about. I mean, she's already run like an all-time 600 meter mark, mm-hmm. and then she goes on and runs 202. She has top high school pedigree, like she was a top middle distance runner at the high school level. And so she's running these fast times now. Now she's beginning to kind of really get into a nationally competitive tier. And what's crazy is that she was at Texas A&M, transfers, and as soon as she does that, blows up. And maybe the most impressive part in all of this is that she beat Galvatite. Yeah. Head to head. And to me, that's what makes this such a significant performance. Whereas uh, Chip Gedich, the argument is, well, she has crazy range. I mean, who can yes. run 437 in the mile, 202, 800, and be an XC All American? 24th at, N- at NCAAs, yeah. Which is wild. And so, me and Mara and Finn have been bickering back and forth in the rankings about what, what we should value more and more. And I think I'm going to lose this, but we, we will see when the rankings do come out. So, but yeah, impressive stuff all around. Yeah, I, I think for Chemnagenich, this is just uh, proves that she can be pretty competitive in whatever she ends up running at NCAA. She can run pretty much anything from the 800 to the 5K, and I think she's going to do great. She she obviously has to get the qualifying marks in a lot of those other events. She ran 437, going to need to run faster than that to, to qualify in the mile, but you would imagine she's about to run a really quick 3K or 5K soon. I, th- I think she should run the 3K. Like, I would love to see her in the 3K. If she's going to have like the eight, the middle distance speed, XC, you know, fitness, in theory, that's going to produce a crazy good 3K. That's all in theory. So, all right, we're going to move on just because we got to keep up with time here. Um, number four is our next one. Number four, we have the men's mile for from mostly Washington men. We have Luke Hauser, 351, Joe Wascom and Nathan Green, 353, Ronan McMahon Stags, 354, and then Portland's Matt Strangio, 355. For Hauser, this is just a continuation of the great year he's had. 350. He he just looks so smooth and in control. And he really truly does look like he's going to be the favorite in kind of whatever race he runs. It, it, he just looks that good. And for him to beat Wascom and Green this convincingly. I know last year was quite a surprise to see him beat those guys at the national meet. But at this point, he seems like he's the the top dog of that group and there are everybody's chasing him. Yeah, I, I don't really know how much this race told us. Um, I think it's that Hauser's just continually you know, at his best. He's still the guy. Wascom and Green are just as sharp. I think they can still just be just as heavy national title contenders. Um, I think Strangio was expected to run 355. I predicted him to run 356 earlier this season, so I'm not totally shocked. And Ronan McMahon Staggs, his PR was 354 from last exactly. year. So yep. it's a lot of this is just, it's not that surprising. Um, now, Hauser, that said, with that 3K and with that mile, you could make the argument that he's probably a top five name in the country in right both. now for the middle and long distances. Yeah. yeah, and you could maybe argue top three at you know, somewhere along there. Um, so he's been incredible. But what someone pointed out to me, and I thought this was really interesting, they said, go back and look at the hi- recent history of the men's 1500 meter and mile national champions. Historically, a lot of those guys have run their best times, have run their personal bests from mid February into the national meet. Right. And that's when they have their best marks. And it's kind of, it, it, it kind of, you kind of keep going through the list. It, it doesn't really, there's not, there's not really any drop off over the next uh, last few years in that argument. So if we think Hauser's going to be the national title contender, then that means we think he can run 350, which I think he can. Yeah. And that's going to be in like late February, which is a, a scary, thought to have right now yeah i i absolutely think he can and it'll be interesting to see if he can kind of break the streak of mile and 1500 meter reigning champions that we just haven't had consecutive winners in really in any event for True. either of those events for a long time 
it's it's such a volatile event. There's so many. It's usually very stacked. It'd be super impressive to see if he can go back to back. And well, would you count Cole Hawker doing the mile fifteen? Um, I would say that's the closest we've gotten to anybody going like back to back in the same. Like obviously that wasn't back to back mile or back to back fifteen hundred meter, but I think that pretty yeah. much is what I'm saying. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Um, okay. Uh, what are we are next? We, yeah, we let's say we're spinning. Let's see, see what we got here. I just removed that one from the list. Now we're spinning, and number five. Number five, sticking in the men's mile. Liam Murphy, three fifty three, beating Parker Wolf and Usain Sato, who ran three fifty five. Again, not stunning performances. I think for Sato, really good mark, uh, maybe a little quicker than we would have expected. For Murphy, this just cements himself as, again, one of the top milers in the country. This is the time that you run when you're at this level at this point in the NCAA. He's going to be dangerous because of his closing speed. And I think this just shows that he can kind of run any and be competitive in any kind of race that is run at NCAAs. Yeah. Yeah, I, I don't think we have more than that. Like, he's he's one of my favorite runners, but I don't have anything to just to add to that like wolf running 355 cool he's trying to work on his speed for what could be a tactical race maybe um at the national meet i don't know um but yeah i don't think we like i'm not surprised at all that murphy ran 353 no that's it's about right honestly so agreed all right spin the wheel all right we're gonna spin it again that was easy I'm going to try to add in mu- music. I'm going to see if I can try to <laughs> that in there. Eh, that's 14. Ooh, what is 14? 14. We have the DMR. We had some DMR performances ah, right. this yeah, last yeah, weekend. Yeah. We had a little bit of everything. We had the Oregon women running 1047, almost getting the NCAA DMR record beating Arkansas women who ran 1049. Now it's not stunning to see these two programs run really well in the DMR. They're stacked in the middle distances. Uh, I mean, Kazimierska and Elmore running really well for the Oregon Ducks. I, I think we're going to see this record of 1046 get broken. They gave it a, a, a hard scare Again, I don't know how much we learned here. These, these, again, these are two of the best middle distance programs in the country. It's not shocking that they would run under ten fifty. Yeah, I I think um, anything with related to Oregon, I'm not surprised about. Like this is about you look at the who they fielded on that. I'm like, yeah, they they probably should have gotten close. Like that's it's about right. For Arkansas, I was really impressed. Like really, really impressed. I think. Tiana Lestraco on the uh, 1200 meter leg, she runs 318. 318's a yep. great split, but because Kazmierska runs 315, I think we <laughs> underappreciate it a little bit, which is just insane, right? Ainsley Erzin runs 203 on the split to basically close almost the entire gap there. Mm-hmm. And then it's Elmore versus Udale, and you're like, okay, well, Elmore's just going to blow the door off of this. And Udale hangs with her until 100 meters to go. It was extremely encouraging. Like, if I'm Arkansas, I'm like, yeah, we overperformed. I I just, I don't think that they were expected to go under 1050 with that relay. They're good, but they're just, they just weren't experienced enough in my eyes. And for them to be that that strong that early, I, I was impressed. Yeah, that's fair. I mean, some of these names, you just haven't been at this level before. Um, You think, you, you just think about, old Arkansas DMRs have passed when you have someone like Lauren Gregory or Karina Villo and who have done it year after year after year. And, and this group hadn't. And, and like you said, I, I guess I'm not super surprised because this coaching staff just knows how to put these DMRs together. They, they figure out a way of just filling in the gap year after year. I would not put them in my top three or four favorites, I, I think in the DMR this year, but I think this performance showed that they were certainly close to that. Who's more, more likely to get the DMR record? Is it Oregon, Washington again, mm-hmm. Providence, or someone else? 
Oh, Providence. That's interesting. Mm -hmm, right? yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll have to talk about, we'll talk about their performances later. I think, I think Washington again, it, it, it comes down to, but a lot of it is like, how, how fast is that? 1600 meter leg and do they have someone around them to push them and, and 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 everything like that and how how aggressive does is do they start out in the first 800 of that leg and, and for providence i the only reason i don't say that say them is i i just don't know if they're gonna have like the 400 and 800 leg and again those aren't the important legs to that that are quite on par as like what washington and oregon have I think it's going to come down to the 800 leg. I think that matters. Yeah. Um, so, um, okay. Uh, it was the next one here as we move on. Or was it? I just, oh, here we go. 13. We're doing 13. 13. We have the women's 5Ks. We saw a trio of BYU runners mentioned Jenna Hutchins at the top, uh, but we also had Lexi Holiday Lowry and Aubrey Frentherway. They ran 1530, 1531, and 1531, respectively. Really good performances for all of them. I, I, BYU does it year after year. They they figure out a way of stacking the 3K, the 5K, or really every event. They, they figure out how to get a few women, and it seems like in every distance event at Nationals. Really good performances, I, I think for for Holiday and Lowry and Frent, Holiday Lowry and Frentaway, who are a little bit more established. Um, this is something that we could could have expected a little bit more. And, and for Hutchins, she has the pedigree, but for her just to put that pedigree on not on paper but actually on the track is a great sign. Yeah, um, the thing with Hutchins is that I think she can go faster. Like I think she could go fifteen twenty five, fifteen twenty six. Uh, and on like an uh, ideal day. And now I'm curious, okay, what she can, can she do for three K? I think she's better built. Like, I think one day she's going to be a great 10 K runner when she's a senior yeah. and, you know, she'll be contending for maybe a national title or at the very least, you know, a top half all American honor. Um, like Dilshi Taylor just does it again. She, she is so good. <laughs> it's so good. Like there's not really a vocal star, like a superstar on this roster right now. No. There's a lot of great women, great women. I mean, this depth is crazy, but there's no Whitney Orton. There's no Courtney Wayman, Erica Burke Jarvis, Anna Camp Bennett. There's just no one quite there yet. And yet they still stand out because they're so deep. Here's a fun fact. BYU it is only joined by the 20, uh, December 2018 New Mexico women as programs to go under 1532 for the indoor 5k in a single season and sorry dad i have to decline your call i apologize and uh <laughs> and that's all in the t first recorded era at least i should say so when you're on that level that's an incredible group to be like uh, associated with on any level yeah it's crazy so yeah i Again, I not too much more to say other than I I'm sure we're going to underrate this group of women when it comes to nationals and they're probably all going to score points. <laughs> uh, I don't know. Do you think who what do you you think they're all going to score points? I I'm not predicting that, but I just feel like somehow maybe not all of them, but I I would say at least two of them are going to like we're going to some somehow coach Taylor's going to have them ready to go with a good plan and they're going to pull out to like a few points where we just don't expect them to. Okay. Okay. Yeah. I'm not. Well, would you mean the five care? Do you mean overall? Well, probably overall too. I mean, yeah. I, well, I mean, just in the five, I think five K with this group. Like, I, I think we're going to like, obviously this performance is great, but I think we're going to end up underrating them when it comes to national predictions. And I think they'll probably exceed them. Like they always do. Okay. Okay. I feel like they're going to have at least one all American. I'm still deciding on two. So yeah, fair enough. All right, now I'm spinning the wheel here. Um, we're making good good progress, I'd say. It's all right. And we're at six. Oh, no, wait. Yeah, it's six. That's six. Number six, Carly Thomas's two flat. She's had a little bit of a renaissance year, really rebounding into her top, top finish. And she ran that 159, correct me if I'm wrong, in the summer, uh, this past uh, summer? This summer, yep. And, and has looked great ever since. 
two flat does not come as a huge surprise, but it, it does really validate what we've been saying, where we feel like behind that top trio of women, she's that fourth woman in, in our estimation for the 800. And, and really, after this two flat, you, you have to think that maybe that top trio now becomes a r really strong quartet. Uh, and I think that's the question we have to be asking ourselves with Carly Thomas at this point. Yeah, I, I am at this point where I, it, it's how she looks when she does this. I mean, she is nipping on the heels of Nikki Hiltz when Hiltz steps off the track. And she's like, I, let me go. Like, I'm trying to push. And she's all alone when she finishes and she gets a two flat. She, she doesn't look bothered. Like, I don't think she's been pushed to her fullest extent yet. And that's why I think she's super, super scary. And so I, I would be. I think this is the best she's ever looked. I think it's a very mm -hmm. Nico Young esque kind of conversation in the same way. Um, I, I think she can go faster. I think she could run 427, 428. I think she can run 159 this winter. Um, and I I think she also has the control of her fitness to win a national title right now, based on what I'm seeing right now. And she's someone else who I've also been a little critical of. And now I've, I'm like, man, I. I, I think she's the up up there, up there, up there kind of deal. So, so would you put her in there, the same group as like Willis, Whitaker, and Rose? Yeah. Yep. Okay. Absolutely. So it's four, and then everyone else. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I think. Okay. Yeah. No, I I, I agree. I, I think that's that's where we're at, and I, I think we're we're in a historically top heavy eight hundred group right now and for her to have forced her way into that conversation it is quite the accomplishment yeah so um yeah i'm just looking forward to it because i remember when during covid when uh you know she was kind of like in contention with nia akins like she wasn't the favorite but she had a, like a realistic yeah. shot um, and then she just never got the chance obviously then had that you know very scary yeah. femur uh injury so I'm, I'm glad she's now having that chance to to get back um but okay i just uh, spun the wheel number seven who do we have number seven? Perfect. This is a great transition. Roisin Willis, 201. Haley Kitching, 201 in the 800. So we were just talking about that 800 group. I don't think we really need to touch on Willis. 201 is to be expected from her. But Kitching, great, great performance running 201 as well. Yeah, she skipped 202 entirely, actually, um, <laughs> which is hilarious. Um, yeah, I... And, you know, like you run that kind, you run that well. She ran a great one k. She ran two forty two earlier. Um, yeah, she looks really good, and like she has natural meat experience from last spring. You know, she she was a top contender next to Rachel Gearing, her her uh, form, now former teammate. I don't know if she's coming back in the spring um, at the Big Ten Championships last year. So I would really be like. You know, be be careful about what Kitchen can do if I have to race against her. Like I think she's really like a realistic 800 meter runner, but I needed to see her run like a fast time. Now, granted, it would right. be nice if she could run 201 again. That would really help mm -hmm. her case. But I think this is a really encouraging step to maybe make the argument: Hey, maybe she could be an All American. Yeah, I think running 242 and 128, or 242 in the thousand and 128 in the 600 it kind of was telling us that this kind of performance was there. Uh, but actually doing it obviously is the best indicator. And, and to your point, seeing her run to a one would be, or again, would be great. But those three performances show that she's been as consistent as can be throughout the, the beginning of the season. And that's really what, as everyone knows here, we love, we love consistency. So, and, and that's, that's what I really um, like about her. But yeah, and also Willis, she ran 20199, but she did it like it was not her best race. She never no. looked comfortable. Lucia Stafford did not make her life easy. So I think that's actually like in a weird way, it wasn't a good race for her, but I also think it's encouraging because I think she there's so much room for her to improve. So absolutely just throwing that out there. Um number three is the next one we've got here. Number three, going back to the NAU stunners. Colin, well, not even study. I, I, I guess you predicted this. Colin Solomon, <laughs> 353. Uh, Lucas Bonds, I think, was also in this race. BYU running 354. Solomon, though, taking home the win, beating uh, a mix of pro and collegiate field. 
he just looked great. He he's coming on super strong. Everything we've talked about, like with Carly Thomas and Nico Young, where he just seems to be kind of peaking at, after strong indicators throughout this year. He's showing it with his times lately, and this 353 is another great indication that he's going to, if it's not this year, which, I mean, if he keeps putting performances like this, maybe it is, in the very near future, he is going to be one of the top contenders in the mile. I, I really... I really love the performance. Again, the time is great. I think I was trying to be a little aggressive and I got lucky by getting that, you know, by being aggressive, but um, it's how, it's, it's how we did it. We ran, ran like a pro. I mean, he ran better than Craig Angles. He ran better than, you know, a lot of the pros in that field. He just, yeah, he just, just yeah, he, he was just way smarter. He just sat there. He, he didn't, you know, he, he made sure to climb his way to the middle sat there for a little bit and then over the last 400 climbed his way up time to kick perfectly came off the the uh, the turn and, and he just had i mean he, he had the momentum no one could stop him it was a shockingly good race execution wise for someone who a has never actually physically run that fast yes he had the 354 conversion yeah but he's never like physically run that fast in the mile on an indoor oval and he did it so perfectly too um I, you, you don't really see me or hear me say this a lot about underclassmen but i i'm getting really close to saying that he might be an all-american favorite and in fact i think he is and in fact and I, I don't i'm not just saying all-american favorite i i am really close to wondering if he's an all-american lock i wouldn't go lock because he's gonna have to go through rounds in a way that he hasn't before and that's and that's difficult you're right okay that's fair in, in the, the, the i agree reactionary. Yeah. i i agree with favorite though i i i think at this point he he certainly deserves to be favorite and chalk one up for altitude conversions uh and we'll we'll talk about another spot on conversion later but Talking about Bonds, it looks like he has bounced back to where we saw him. I think it was about a year ago, uh, where he he broke out and, and was looking really good. I think he he looks like he's back at top fitness, and uh, I think will be a competitive runner at the national meet. Yeah, uh, I still need to see more. Um, yes. it's it's one race, but I'm I'm thrilled for him. Like I'm super happy. Like he was great in 2021. Not sure really what happened. 354 really encouraging really happy for him um i just kind of want to see him like okay can we just you know firmly establish that you really are back at this level and i think he probably is you don't run 354 by accident um so yeah that's that's all i really had there but um okay uh we are gonna move on and this number is number two Number two, Women's Mile, one of the more entertaining races of the weekend. Melissa Riggins running 430 to beat Margot Appleton also ran 40, 430. I'm also just going to mention that Kaylee McCabe ran 430 in a separate race, but wanted to just be able to mention that somewhere, and this is where we ended up with that. But for Riggins, I, we, we mentioned, I think last week was it, that we thought she could run under 430. And for her to not, she didn't break that barrier, but she got awfully close and to beat Appleton, I think more importantly, who I think we're also both very high on again, shows that she is a force to be reckoned with and should be one of the top contenders in the mile. I wasn't quite as high on Appleton until recently until after that result, because you know, her XC season was fine. Yeah. You know, it was good, and then she had a fine 3K. But that performance, that 430, it's a statement PR. It's a big-time race. She nearly takes down Melissa Riggins, who, along with one other runner who we'll talk about later, are probably on some of the best hot streaks of anyone in the NCAA. Yeah. Like, I don't know how many people have more momentum than Melissa Riggins right now. No. Um, so I, I thought I was really encouraged by that. It's like, okay, we know that Appleton can still be up there. But Riggins, yeah, validation. Like, I think she can probably still run 429. I think that's very much in her wheelhouse. And uh, she, uh, Kayla McCabe, 430. Yeah, it's about right. <laughs> like, so um, I, I don't really have a whole lot more to say here. Yeah, I, I agree for McCabe. It's just good to see that she's at that level of fitness. And Appleton, I, I wasn't really ever concerned about what I was seeing from her based off of what we saw last outdoor season. I thought that was going to translate eventually this year. And it, it, 
absolutely has. And she's one of those where her high is really high. She can be a little inconsistent at times, but when she's on, she is very, very difficult to beat. And it looks like she is back on pace to be, I think, a top five name potentially in the mile this year. Hmm. I'd have to think on that. I'm not saying you're wrong. I just, I don't, I, have, I, have I, 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 I haven't thought about who's for who the, who the top four are in front of her. I know Riggins is certainly one of them and uh, another woman that we'll talk about shortly, but I, I, I'm not exactly I sure where I don't that think you're wrong. I, yeah. I don't think you're wrong. Um, I think you threw Thomas in there, but I'm not going to keep doing this exercise yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> on the fly. So, um, the next one is number 12, and I'm just going to take this over real quick because I think there's just nothing to talk about. Um, <laughs> yeah. It's the men's 3K which is at Boston stupid. New, which is unbelievable that we're saying that there's nothing to talk about. Now, I think there's only one performance that we, we should, probably should harp on a little bit. Sure. Um, other, well, I'll explain later. Yes. An SSA runs 739 in the 3K. NCAA number eight all time. No one is surprised. He ran 741 in the 3K last year on this exact same weekend, I believe. Yep. Um, and has just been better since then. I thought he'd run 738. He ran 739. And I'm upset at myself because I had 739 and I switched it to 738. So I'm very upset with myself. This Sian Abdala, I said he'd run 751. He matched his PR at 742. Aiden Troutner, I said he'd run 743. He, matched, uh, he ran 744. So these were all very predictable. However... David Malarkey ran 742, and I thought his ceiling was like 45, 46. Yeah. That's a, a great time that should, knock on wood, get him into the national meet. I think, maybe. It's, it's a huge performance, and now I think it opens up and allows him to go after a fast 5K, or maybe even refine you know all of the tactical aspects develop his speed for the 3k if he really wants to just go all in all in all in do you have any thoughts about anyone on this race no other than malarkey yeah he's seventh on the performance list now should should be good there um <laughs> which is ridiculous I, I mean yeah it, it's it's gonna be a fast year it's just a this is the best race that he's run in his collegiate career yep. and and he's been coming on strong but this is going on going up to another level whereas these other guys we've seen performances at this level before so it's not stunning to see them run these type of times yeah yeah i agree um i really i'm really sorry like i'm people get up people get upset when we skim over these i just don't know what you want us to talk about um all right next one number 10 what's that one Number 10, we're going to the 800 on the men's side. Um, we had a fantastic race. Uh, winning it was the star freshman from Georgetown, Tenota Matsaza, uh, running 146, holding off Connor Murphy and Sean Dolan, who also ran 146. Handel Robant um, behind that group in 147 as well. This was... Just a, just a quick interruption. Oliver Desmoyles of Penn State was actually fourth in 147 handle okay. 147 is yeah, yeah one of the deepest 800 fields you'll see uh or at least top heavy that you'll see during the regular season all of these guys you can make an argument for all american honors at the end of the year and Matsaza just keeps coming man I, after his uh thousand uh record ncaa record to beat this quality of a field and run 146 I, I don't want to say like I all American lock, but I, I think that's kind of where we're at with him. Yeah. 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 Okay. I'll, yeah. I'll go all American lock. I'll, I'll go with you on this. I'll take this journey with you. Um, <laughs> yeah. I, I mean, here's the thing. I think he he's running with an incredible amount of swagger. Just the, yes. the poise. Like he, he's going up against guys that let's be frank. He shouldn't be this good yet. No, he just shouldn't. He, he shouldn't be destroying his Georgetown teammates who also all ran 10, 219 for a thousand meters. Yeah. You know, Connor Murphy and Sean Dolan are all American dudes who are 800 meter mile hybrids, just like uh, uh, Matata is. Like, Hanel Roban is someone who we think can eventually threaten Yusuf Bizimana. So, 
he, his poise, the way that he just controls races, and he is just completely unfazed about who he's competing against. He doesn't care. He he's just he's he's the dude. He he just you look at how he finished that race. It was tight, but he didn't look concerned. <laughs> like he just didn't. Um, so really encouraging stuff. Murphy and Dolan, cool, about right. I don't think I'm yep. totally shocked. I like that they were in contention of the win. Um, and I'm not concerned about Roban at all. I I was going to say the same thing. You're not going to fool me again, Roban. You've done this before where you haven't looked quite as good as like your competition during the regular season. And then you walk out with the third place perform- finish at, at the national meet. So not falling into that trap again. I've done it before. Not, not, not doing it to me this time. I, I think the only stress about him is just when he's going to qualify. Right. Like that, I think that's going to be the most stressful part about his season. Like I'm not worried about him on the national stage. I'm just worried about him getting to the national stage yeah. because of how theoretically deep this could get. So yeah. if he's, if we're not careful here, there might be a couple guys who are like, Oh, that was surprising. But no, I, I think he's generally fine. Like I'm not too worried about him. Um, so yeah, that's it. Um, all right, moving on. Number 11. Number 11, going to the women's side of the 3K, we saw Taylor Rowe run 8.51 in separate races. We saw Doris Lemongall 8.53, and Sadie Sargent 8.59. For Rowe, I mean, this was kind of like a throwback performance where she just looked at the peak of her powers again. And, I mean, 8.51, great, great time. For Lemongall, this seems about right. 853, yeah. not not super surprising. And for Sargent, I again, not surprising to see her dip under nine as well. Good performances for all of them. All, I think, should have punched their ticket to NCAAs. Although, I don't know. What what's what, what do you think no, of the 3K? Sargent? Well, no, not Sargent. Yeah, that's fair. What what do we think that's gonna what do we think that's gonna be this year? <sighs> well, let, let's let's have a little chat about this. Let's look at this and let's let's you know, have a chat. You know, we haven't hit an hour yet. So the women's 3K. Top time is 840. The number four time right now is 849. The number 10 time is 854. And the number 11 time is Sadie Sargent at 859. Yeah. So it's probably going to be 854 fast. I think it's going to be 854. Um, and I don't know how many of these women are going to scratch. I really Probably. don't. Um, no. Like, I think Elmore does the TMR 3 kit. Yeah. So, yeah, I, I they might take 854, which is such a stupid, like... I mean, know. I remember when you ran sub-9, you are like, yep, you're good. Like, yep. no easily. Problem. You're probably one of, like, nine women to run sub-9. And now we've already seen 11. That's so crazy. Oh, my God. Um... Taylor Rowe, I think this is great. I think people forget that's a five second PR. Like her yeah. PR was 856. And so for her to run that, I think is extremely important because I don't think she needs to run 840 or 840, whatever, to to contend for a national title. No. I, I think as she as long as she's able to run fast enough, she is experienced enough. She understands she's great at positioning, she's great at timing her moves. This is how she won her 2022 3K national title. Yep. And so I'm really encouraged. Like I'm like, okay, nice. Great step in the right direction. I, I think this is I think I would actually take Rose 851 over a couple of performances, not many, a couple of performances that are ahead of her. Yeah, yeah. Just because of who she is and she's done it before. So yeah. which a lot of these other women can't say. All right, Ben. We'll do one more. It's a spin. It's between Two different uh, races here, and uh, finally, here we go. Number one. Number one. All right. Arguably one of the uh, the second best performance of the weekend. Kimberly May, 427. Also, Maggie Cogden, 430, backing up that altitude conversion from uh, a, a week or two ago. Riley Chamberlain also running 430. We also saw a host of other women Run 430, Shannon Flockhart, Molly Hudson, and Juliet Whitaker all running that mark as well. It's going to be, I mean, the amount of women who ran 430 this weekend is just wild. Ridiculous. Like, 
<laughs> like, I know we're going to get there someday, but the day when you have to run sub 430 to make nationals is probably the day I might need to retire. It's just like I, the, the sport has passed me by at that point. How many, how many women do you think right now in the NCAA are under 432? Under oh, 432. Oh, geez. Uh, 14? 12. Close. That's ridiculous. There's actually no one who has a 432. You've either run 431 or faster or 433 or slower. Oh, that's that's funny. Um, Kimberly May, I, I have been such a big fan and I don't want anyone saying you just like to say that now because you just, you just ran well. <laughs> you that's not four true. separate links in your article to back yourself up. I was like, that's BS. And you know, here's four different links. I searched her in, the t- in our GSR search bar and I was like, no, I will not have this. I've been a very big fan of her. Did I think she could run 427? No, I did not think so. Um, if you had told me 430, I'd be like, sure. If you had told me 429, I'd be like, that's really generous, but okay. 427 is absurd. In fact, it's, I love these photos. Like, if you yeah, look so at good. all the photos, she she can't believe it either. <laughs> She's just a total shock. And she ran NCAA number seven all time. What was your reaction when you saw that she ran 427? I thought it was like a typo. I, I honestly did. I for four twenty seven is ridiculous. I just didn't think we were going to see that from anybody this year. Quite frankly, I, I thought I, I thought I was being really aggressive, saying Melissa Riggins could run four twenty nine, and I thought that might end up being the top time in the country. And for her to for for May to get that far under four thirty, beat some of the names that she did. It's it's nuts. Like I, I, she's gone to a different like planet. I can't even say a different level. She's gone to a different stratosphere uh, with after this performance. She's run eight fifty four over three k back in December. Had a phenomenal cross country season despite a poor national meet per, uh, performance, which wasn't indicative of her fitness. I mean, she has been really on fire since the tail end of last winter. I mean, she, she's been really, really good, and. I think she can beat you every which way. Like, I, I think the yeah. time is impressive. Don't get me wrong. But this is someone who has great 800 speed. She's already run 204 for 800 meters earlier this season. You know, I I, I don't know how many different women could... Like, I think Carly Thomas could probably match her in a handful of different scenarios. Um, there's probably a few other women. But, I mean, I feel really good about Kimberly May. And I have been in my... You know, TSR D1 women's writers continue to give me problems in our preseason rankings about that, but um, I'm, I'm just thrilled. It's great. So now we should also note Kimberly May, 427. Yep. Shannon Flockhart, 430. Let's come back to this. Yeah. Can, can Providence break the collegiate record? I think they can. It's just, yeah, they, they have obviously – the two most important legs, they arguably have the best that they could beat anybody with, with Flockhart and may manning that 1200 and 1600 meter legs. I think it's where, where do you get that for who, who's that for? Who's that eight? And, and how much time are you letting up comparatively in those legs? Alex O'Neill ran two Oh five for them this past weekend. That that would be yeah, and again, you, when you have someone who runs four four twenty seven, you have someone who's run four thirty. You don't need someone to run two hundred two necessarily. If you get two hundred five, would do just fine. Yeah, that's crazy. That's I don't know. Let me check. Let me check their four hundred legs. Get a little work there. Okay. Um, yeah, that's, that's 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 what I that I was wondering if that was going to be a little bit of an issue. Uh, as as of right now, I should say that as of right now, I mean, I don't want to, I don't want to quickly assume anything Paint with a broad stroke. Yeah, but yeah, they might need a little help there. Uh, okay, <laughs> all right. Let me let's move off of here. Um, oh, by the way, Whitaker mile or eight hundred this year? I think eight hundred still. Yeah, I think eight hundred. She she's good in the mile, but she's not at the same level as she is in the eight. Do you know how? how like mind blown I am right now. I spun the wheel. There's one left. There's only one answer. Um. <laughs> Last up, we have another group of men's 800 performances. We have Sam Austin beating Darius Kipiego to while wow, They both ran 
146. And I, I think this is a great performance for both men. Kind of validates a lot of our belief in, in both of them for Austin to be able to get this win. And in, in this time shows that he is, I, I think, improved even more. And for Kip Yeager, this is a great validation of his 1,000 meter mark that he ran. I think he ran 218 high or something um, a week or two ago. Great performances for both of them. They're, it's going to be a loaded 800 meter field, but they both seem like they're on course to make it to the finals. Really happy for Kip Diego. Um, yeah. Been knocking on the door of 147 for like the past two years, I think. Finally cracks it. And I think he should have, though. He ran 218 on a 300 meter track for 1,000 meters. Uh, yep. last week or two weeks ago. So he should have run 146. But the fact that he's done it, the fact that he's now in a position to likely qualify, <laughs> maybe, um, for the national meet, I think is great. Sam Austin, awesome. Um, he's a guy that runs well in fast-paced environments. He's usually pretty aggressive in the tail end of races, which I really like, and he was doing that same thing mm-hmm. um, here. He was fifth, uh, fifth place All-American last winter. Um, but he also has had some moments of like, you know, in the in, in the prelims and the rounds where he hasn't looked super sharp. Yep. And so I think as long as he just keeps this up and keeps this momentum, then I would be I'd be very thrilled. So. Yep. Yeah, I agree. All right. I I think we're we're through everything, right? No Wasn't more that impressive. That that we're was. I, I'm I'm shocked we got through that as well as we did. Yeah, that was great. Um, ben, what do you have to plug? I don't think I have anything actually. I, check out Lane Nine. Make sure you're giving a rating or review on the on that and uh, the Blue Oval podcast. But I'll I'll leave it to you. Yeah, uh, D1 rankings coming this week. In fact, they should be out by now if you are listening to this. Um, NAI rankings. Yes, we've introduced NAI rankings. We're going to be a slow rollout, but hopefully those rankings should be this week. I think we got to go double check on that. Um, tons of, of more um, on-site coverage. Go follow us on uh, Twitter or x.com, I guess. Um, Instagram uh, at the Strad Report. Uh, we're going to have a little bit, we're going to have a few more on-site contributors uh, grabbing some photos and videos. Be patient with us. We're still learning. Still got to work out the kinks here, but overall really excited about where we're heading, what we're doing. And um, that's it. Awesome. Well, until next week, Garrett, I'll talk to you. Exactly.